Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog, which I'm hoping will be a short one because the subject is really not that exhaustive, though I think it's important, which is why I'm doing the vlog. And I sure hope somebody in Britain is watching this because I'm talking about Brexit today, but I'm talking also about, well, Brexit and Vietnam and a gentleman named Vaclav Klaus. In case you're wondering who Vaclav Klaus is, he was a uh, president of the Czech Republic. And by now you're probably wondering what could these three apparently disparate topics or people or subjects have in common. Well, you're going to find out. That's why you have to pay attention to this vlog because I'm going to explain it. We'll start with Vietnam. On second thought, let's start with Brexit, which is simply the United Kingdom, Britain, leaving the European Union, specifically what are the terms on which they can leave. It looks like it's going to be a no deal exit, which I think if that's the only alternative, that's what they should do for reasons that I'm going to explain in this vlog. They should get out as soon as they can. I guess October 31st will be as soon as they can any way they can. Because, well, I think the European Union is doomed to collapse one day. So why do you want to stay on a sinking ship? But that's another subject for another day. I'll start today with Vietnam. Vietnam and the European Union just signed a free trade agreement. The European Union just made a free trade agreement with Vietnam that will, over the course of, I think it's 10 years before the agreement is totally implemented, but at some point, 99% of the trade between the European Union and Vietnam will be duty-free. So the question that I have to ask, and I would hope somebody in England would be asking, is, hey, uh, Mr. EU, if you can make this free trade agreement with Vietnam, which is not part of the European Union, why can you not make the same kind of a free trade agreement with an independent United Kingdom that is no longer in the European Union? The answer is provided by Vaclav Klaus, the former president of the Czech Republic. What Mr. Klaus did in his speech is compare the separation or the intended separation between Britain and the European Union and the separation that occurred between, well, it wasn't between, it was a separation of the former Czechoslovakia into two independent republics, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. That separation was amicable. There were no problems separating Czechoslovakia into two independent states. This was because, as Mr. Klaus explained in his speech, the Czechs and the Slovaks wanted the separation. It was an amicable separation because the two sides wanted it. So it shows that an amicable separation is possible. So what's the problem? Why can there not be a positive outcome to Brexit? This is the reason. I'm quoting Vaclav Klaus. This is how he explained it. He is exactly right. Quote, the EU didn't want a positive outcome. The EU wanted to punish the rebellious Great Britain, to humiliate Britain, to harm it. And this is the important part. The EU also wanted to demonstrate to all EU member states that there is no friendly exit from this very proud, conceited, and self-assured organization. That is exactly the point. That is why there is all this problem between the European Union and Brexit. This is why there simply is no possibility of an amicable separation, a separation that is beneficial to Britain because the European Union, very simply, as Mr. Klaus explains, does not want it. Because if it works for Britain, then obviously it could work for, say, Italy. 
any other member of the European Union who would be happier out of the European Union except for the tariff-free trade. That's really the only benefit when you get right down to it, unless you're a Euro globalist dead set on a political European Union, which Klaus also talks about, but which member states many don't want. They want to be sovereign countries. They want to decide their own future. They don't want it decided by bureaucrats in Brussels. The point I'm making is that Britain will never get a good deal from the European Union. So why even bother? Just get on with it. Just get out. However difficult it is in the early going, it will be much to their benefit eventually down the line. Britain is not chopped liver. Eventually the European Union is going to want to make some kind of arrangement with Britain. So just be strong. As I said in an earlier video, however difficult it may be, however painful it may be for Britain to separate from the European Union, it will not be as difficult as it was for the United States to separate from Britain. 8,000 Americans died in the Revolutionary War. I'm predicting a much lower death count in the uh, separation between Britain and the European Union, perhaps zero. But there's one other point I want to make because this really puzzles me, and that's why Britain, well, I think it's because the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, was a Remainer, and maybe in her heart she still is. She did not want to separate from the European Union, so she dawdled and dawdled and dawdled, preparing for the inevitable, I think. But also, she did not do what I would have expected any British leader to do in the early stages as soon as possible, and that's to talk to us, to talk to the United States. Can we do anything to help Britain separate amicably? And of course we could, because as I said, Britain is not chopped liver, but the United States is not chopped liver either. We are a powerful, rich country, the most powerful, the richest country in the world. We have some influence. We could have done something. And how do we know we could have done something? Because we're doing something right now vis-a-vis -vis Iran and the Europeans' desire, obvious desire, strong desire to trade with Iran. We told the European Union flat out and other countries as well, if you do business with Iran, then you can forget about doing business with the United States of America. This put the fear of God in, well, for instance, the German banks. But just about every, as far as I know, perhaps every big corporation in the European Union and other parts of the world that want to trade with the United States. So I cannot see why the, unless there's a, just a lack of desire on our part, but if Britain had asked us, I see it entirely possible and still think it possible if they would ask us going forward to say the same thing to the European Union vis-a-vis -vis Britain and Brexit as we're saying to them right now vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Again, that very simple message is if you make life difficult for Britain, we will make life difficult for you. If you're going to make it hard to trade with Britain or if you're going to make it hard for Britain to trade with you, then we'll make it hard for you to trade with us. There is a lot we can do. So that's why I say I'm hoping that somebody in England, somebody who knows somebody with influence and probably not because I think you could count the number of views I get in a day on one hand and have several fingers left over. But I really hope that Britain leaves the European Union. I hope that however painful it is in the beginning that ultimately it turns out well because I hope that other countries will leave the European Union. Either that or force the European Union to change from the political union that it should never have been to just a free trading bloc which is what it should have been. 
and allow the individual members to be sovereign countries to decide, if nothing else, who gets into their country. So, so much for this free immigration where you get into a European Union member on the periphery and then you're free to go anywhere within the European Union. The European Union, the leaders of the European Union, the supporters of the European Union, they simply do not believe in the nation state. It is important for the nation states to assert themselves, starting with Britain. That's it. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you did. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share it by all means with anybody who you think could benefit from it. And got any comments, put them in the comments section that's below the video. You can also suggest future topics. You can tell me I'm wrong. Well, that's part of making the comments. Or you could argue with each other. If you have a Twitter account, you could tweet my URLs out to your followers, invite them to retweet, and finally subscribe. If you subscribe, then you'll know as soon as I put up another video. That's it. Thanks for stopping by. Heading out now. Bye.